Alright, good day ladies and gentlemen. I want to go over this issue of circumcision again. It seems as though I failed somebody. I failed to explain well enough that they might understand. And so I want to try to do a better job of that. I want to make it easier to understand because it's, it's pretty remarkable. It's pretty incredible. Uh, this thing with circumcision. Okay, so uh, in a previous video I, I talked about Deuteronomy 10, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. So I want to show you this comment and, and uh, I want to apologize for some of the wording um, that we're going to read in, in the second comment. So um, Bear with me, but let me read it so you can get an idea where this person's coming from. She says, circumcision is freaking evil, and it is a mystery to me how people do not see it. Such deep brainwashing has occurred that people cannot see what is obvious. The true creator does not command circumcision. He does not command people to sacrifice their for, uh, firstborn children to him. He does not enjoy the scent of burning flesh or tell people to offer up human and animal sacrifices to him. He does not command people to go and steal other people's land constantly and take their women and children as booty. The God of the Bible is an imposter. This is a deep topic and I could spend hours talking about it. But people need to see, they need to bust through the mind control and come to know the true creator. And then in the second comment she says, The true creator did not create a magnificent male penis with foreskin attached, just to turn around and tell people to cut it off. That is obviously God's adversary going for the juggler in terms of tricking people into destroying God's creation creations the foreskin is designed so that when it meets with the vaginal wall it triggers the male brain to produce narrow chemicals of love and bonding cutting it off is a direct assault against God love and creation okay <clears throat> so um I don't want to take this for granted, so let's explain exactly what this piece of skin represents. So, the God of the Bible created the human body and created it specifically uh, for a reason, exactly how we are created. There's a reason why males are born with that foreskin and there's a reason why God commands us to cut it off okay and it's pretty incredible so let's let me try this again okay so in you know, like Deuteronomy 10 it says uh, here in verse 16, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff necked. Now in verse 12 it says, And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and the statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. So, essentially, uh, we are made to serve God, put it as simple as possible. So what happens is when God gives us these commandments and these statues, it shows what it means to be perfect, uh, to love God with all your heart and all your soul. And all of us fail to do that. All of us fail to be perfect. So all of us need a Savior. Now, Let's go um, talk about what the flesh means. Okay, so like in Matthew 26, 
Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we, I, I just want to use that as an example as there's a difference between the spirit and the flesh. Okay, and if let's go to uh, John. And John is, uh, yeah, they're all my favorite books, but this is makes it incredibly clear, right? Um, let's. Where do I start here? Uh, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Talking about Jesus, and the Jews reject him, right? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and, he, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, if we go to... Uh, John 3, in my opinion, we get uh, some more clarification here. It, Jesus says, he's talking to Nicodemus, who's, you know, one of the most knowledgeable men in regards to uh, the Old Testament and uh, the Jewish customs and all that. But Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus is like, what? And Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Of course, being born of water means to be born from your mother's womb, right? And that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we see... A difference everybody's born of the flesh but not everybody is born of the spirit so when God makes the male he makes the male with a an extra piece of flesh and so we are all male and female born uh, in such a way that we need to cut off that piece of flesh and start living in the spirit Okay, live in the Spirit of God and not after the flesh. Does that make sense? It, it's perfectly designed that way. And if I was real smart, I'd explain it better, but I can't say it any better than that. So, uh, I could repeat myself, right? So, we are not to live after the flesh. And so, this poor person here thinks that uh, sex is somehow divine. Am I not understanding that right? That somehow sex is love and bonding? Sex is not love and bonding. We God commanded us to procreate, to, uh, you know, uh, fill the earth with children and to, you know, get married and one man, one wife and that sort of thing. But um, sex is not love. Love comes from the heart, not from the penis. And to me, so this is just completely perverse and totally not understanding the Bible. And I hope this person is listening because that should make sense. Doesn't it make sense that our, the male body is made with this extra piece of skin and we cut that extra piece of flesh off as uh, an example of how we should live our lives, that we should be cut off from the flesh and live in the spirit. To me, it's pretty simple. Uh, maybe somebody out there can, a lot smarter than me, can explain it better. But there's an obvious difference between the flesh and the spirit. We should cut off the flesh and live in the spirit. I could say it a hundred times, but will anybody listen?